Well, welcome back to Sonic 1. This is Labyrinth Zone. Ugh, I hate this zone so much. I'm not the only one either. It's a mostly underwater based zone, but that's not the reason I dislike it. I'm actually not against water stages in games. I mean, in Donkey Kong Country 1, those are some of my favorite stages for some reason. The Labyrinth Zone goes way too long, has way too many dickish enemy placements, or just object placement. It doesn't start too bad though. The beginning is fairly standard. And also, I will be showing how to get 50 rings in these two stages, so don't you worry. For those of you who are stuck in Labyrinth Zone trying to get the Chaos Emeralds, because I know your pain. I know your pain very well. I remember the first time I played Sonic 1, I got multiple game overs on here and I quit. Also, there's raising platforms that raise you into spikes to insta-kill you. Be careful about that, they look different than all the other platforms. Also, to be safe, always get bubbles when you can. Watch out for rotating spike traps because, yeah, they're kind of... If you don't see them coming, they can catch you off guard. Although I will give Labyrinth Zone this, it does have a lot of variety in terms of its traps, at least like these rotating platforms. First checkpoint, and yeah, here's spikes, or spears. I wonder if this is near where Aquatic Ruin is, because those look kind of similar to some of the traps that are in Aquatic Ruin as well. But yeah, you gotta be careful because your momentum's hampered, of course, and Sonic's startup speed's kind of slow. And also these corks go up with the water itself, so you can actually use them for a ride. Not too bad. Act 2 and Act 3 is when it gets really bad. Also, those are Orpanauts. They will throw their spiky balls at you and then you hit them. Main issue is they usually put them in spots where you're just like generally not ready or can't dodge very well. Also, those cores are there to will not squish you if you're not careful. There are raising water sections and, well, there's also times where you have to jump up into spikes or spears. And it's not fun because there is at least one point where it's like, oh, I can clearly not see that unless I looked up and, you know, the thing with Sonic is you want to go fast. But yeah, there's 50 rings in the first act. Not too bad, as I said, but uh, that's just a taste. Labyrinth Zone 2 It's a bit more labyrinthine. Also, I don't blame you for missing stuff because there's some obscure switches. And yeah, don't jump on that because platform will just completely send you up and kill you. Even if you have invincibility. It's like one of the only times you have invincibility in this entire section and it's it's kind of welcome because there's actually a lot of enemies here. Just run while you can. Although as I said I wanted to show getting 50 rings so I didn't use that invincibility quite as good as I probably could have but hey. Also there's water currents that push you along in these tubes. Hydro City Zone in Sonic 3 would um, bring those back, but in a much more fun fashion. Also, a stage that's kind of like this, but I prefer a lot more, is Tidal Tempest in Sonic CD. Because it's not quite this slow, and it's not as dickish. And it has really good music. Also, there's a switch beneath that monitor. At least they put it under a monitor you'd like to hit, because... By this point, I think on my first few runs of the game, I have zero rings, so that'd be a welcome sight. One more abuse of invincibility, and it's a good thing they give it to you here because there is a very Bubble Man-esque section, except you don't have nearly as much, you know, 
maneuverability. Also, those dragon heads shoot fireballs, and it's not fun. And with your awkward momentum underwater, it's sometimes really hard to gauge stuff. Like, will I run into that spike thing, will I not? Or also, do not get caught in that small ceiling or else the Orbanaut will, will destroy you. But, hey, we got 100 rings in Labyrinth Zone. That's actually kind of impressive. I, in this, during this run, I was actually kind of impressed I managed it. And here we have another conveyor belt thing, but just move to the next one and you should be good. Some pity rings for your troubles. That was Act 2. Now Act 3 is the real, real reason people hate this stage. Because as, it's, as we've seen, Act 1 and 2 weren't that bad. What could possibly make this video go seven minutes longer? Well, I'll show you. First of all, this little segment, where you have to jump to platforms off the slide. First one gives you a shield, the second one gives you a switch to go to the real part of the level. And let's just say they'd reuse that in the Sandopolis Act 2 in Sonic 3 Knuckles. And yeah, Sandopolis. That's another stage that people really seem to dislike of the classic games. It shares a feature with Labyrinth Zone. Oh, I should probably mention this. Originally, when Yuji Doc was making the game, according to reports and according to things I've read, and also debug mode supports this because it shows Labyrinth Zone second, Labyrinth Zone was originally uh, supposed to be the stage after Green Hill. And yeah, that's that Dick Spear placement I was talking about. It's just like, oh, hi, dead. So yeah, Labyrinth Zone was originally going to be the second zone, and then you'd go and do, I think, Marble, and then Spring Yard. What? Like, really? I'm glad someone had, um, Sonic Team changed his mind on that because Labyrinth Zone Second might have really changed people's opinions on this game. There was also supposed to be a water goggles power-up that was um, dummied out. It gave Sonic actually little, little water goggles. I might show a picture on screen because there was actually a couple things. It's kind of like how in Mario 3 uh, Miyamoto wanted a centaur power-up among all the other power-ups, and it got, um, canned. But yeah, that's spear placement. Also, Labyrinth Zone being second. Uh, see, in my mindset now, I thought, yeah, don't do that either. As I said, awkward water momentum, but if I was in charge of Sonic 1's development, let's just say I have the knowledge I have now, of generally how Sonic 1 is, because I've played it a fair bit. I think my order of stages would have been Green Hill, Spring Yard, Marble, Starlight, then Labyrinth, then Scrap Brain. Why Marble? Before Starlight? Well, you still need that slower stage to get the player ready for something like Labyrinth Zone. That's why I think Labyrinth Zone is kind of weirdly placed, because it comes right after you just got able to do speed again. And while that would be the case in the new order I suggested, you at least had, you know, the whole Starlight deal. Because Starlight's considered the other really fast stage in the game. So yeah, you'd have Green Hill to accustom players and mechanics. You'd have Spring Yard to accustom people to slower platforming while you're still going fairly fast. Marble Zone would be your true platforming test. And then, you know, onward. Also, this room is kind of annoying because of all those spike balls. But at least you have some clear areas to get out. Also, that was a one in a million jump right there. Hope you enjoyed that.
There's nice invincibility up here. It is rare, but you do see them if you are basically skilled enough at the game. Also, there's an air pocket with an air bubble. I think that's kind of amusing. Use the invincibility here. Yeah. Use the invincibility there and then go over here because that's where things opened up. Something else that annoys me about Labyrinth Zone is the constant use of switches. I mean, I wouldn't mind this if it was Zelda, but... It's something that's supposed to be fast, although then again, the stage kind of goes against the entire premise of the game to begin with. Other than these fast tube sections. And I say fast lightly. Wow, I really do not remember how many invincibilities they give you. It's totally rare, guys. Totally. But at least they give it to you for Orbanauts, and Orbanauts are usually really poorly placed. Orbanauts are one of the few enemies that actually reappeared in the Sonic Adventure games. A lot easier to deal with when you have Knuckles um, being able to drill claw them, though. More obnoxious underwater platforming! It's almost over, folks. Almost over. Yep, you gotta reverse the flow of this one. So they combine the switches with the... with the, um... dolly platforms here. This final room's kind of just a encompassing thing on everything Labyrinth has to offer you. Including the grounder chains. And the water slide. Also, there's multiple routes you can come in from the bottom there. And don't worry if this happens to you, you can just wait for the water to come back down and it will pick you back up. Now it's time for the worst boss in the game in my opinion, because it's a chase sequence. You have to chase Robotnik or Eggman up a shaft of sorts and... It's littered with traps. Littered to the point where it's like, really? Guys... Mr. Yuji Naka, sir. Yamate! Yamate! <laughs> But yeah, there's tons of spike platforms. Uh, spike platforms. Huh, <laughs> Mega Man would hate those. But yeah, if you fall, you pretty much think, oh, I'm screwed. But keep going. Keep going. You might make it. You might just make it. They're just like, oh, and that guy is so freaking hidden. It's not even, it's not even cool, man. Eventually the water does stop, and eventually you do reach the end, and with that, Labyrinth Zone is finally at a close. I'll see you next time when we go into the brightly lit Starlight Zone. Until then, folks. See ya.